to Would I Lie to You, the show where barefaced lies and well masked truths. On David Mitchell's team tonight, an actress who once worked as a children's clown. She went from huge feet to cold feet. It's Faye Ripley. <laughs> and a DJ whose radio show is aimed at young, hip, and with it people. I would listen, but it clashes with the archers. It's Melvin Adoom. <laughs> On Lee Mack's team tonight, a presenter who once competed for Wales in gymnastics. She literally bent over backwards for her country. It's Gabby Logan. <laughs> and a comedian whose first job was selling ice creams. I bet he made hundreds and thousands. It's James Acaster. <laughs> and we we'll begin, as always, with round one home truths, where our panelists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, They've never seen the card before. They've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. James, you're first up. I once spent the night in a bush in Basingstoke. <laughs> David's team. Right. That's a true. Yes! <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Why were you spending the night in a bush in Basingstoke? I missed my train. Where do you live? Uh, well, at the time, I lived in Kettering in Northamptonshire, right. Rose of the Shires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why didn't you go to a luxury hotel? Well, David, uh, at the time, I had no money in my wallet at all, and my phone was dead. I had no way of contacting anyone. That certainly adds up. Why a bush? <laughs> Why not a bench or, like, yeah. somewhere warmer than, than a bush? Well, is a, is a bench warmer than a bush? <laughs> I would say a bush is warmer than a bench. bench. is definitely colder than a bush. It's more exposed. There's an old saying, you're warmer in a bush than on a bench. <laughs> <laughs> so where was the bush? Paint the picture of the local It was right area. in front of the train station. And there was, like, a little, like, pick-up point for taxis and stuff. And then a, it went down a little bit to the road. And then right in front of the road was a load of bushes. So you didn't... Look for a long time for a particularly comfy spot. I'll level with you, David. The amount of time it took me to decide to sleep in the bush was embarrassingly short. Right. <laughs> was it? <laughs> now, that does surprise me. It was a quick decision. You've missed your train and you yes. go, right, that's it. And you immediately, like, 14 seconds later, <laughs> you're snoring. Well, I actually didn't get to sleep. It was scary. I, I, I was freezing actually, ah. even though the bush... It was a nice, roomy bush. Can you remember the shape of the leaves? <laughs> <laughs> it was like small little Basingstoke leaves. Individual leaves? <laughs> yeah. Variegated? But, uh, OK, you, you have to explain what that word means. <laughs> <laughs> it means this sort of, um, uh, there's a sort of white bit on the outside, I think. I wasn't paying attention to the leaves. I had bigger problems at the time. I wasn't sitting in the bush going, one day, I may have to justify this entire experience on what I like. <laughs> I better memorise the leaves and whether they're gentrified or whatever you said. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, James, you've settled down in the bush yes. and you're lying there, but it's cold. Oh, I'm sitting there. Sitting in the bush? Sitting there, cross-legged and cold. I had a T-shirt on. A How are you going to go to sleep sitting? <laughs> I was scared. What so were you I, I hadn't really. Of? Oh, oh, it was Friday night in Basingstoke. There were hoodlums around. <laughs> and all you had on was a T-shirt and jeans. And jeans, of course. Yes. yes. <laughs> I still feel like what? the bench is warmer. <laughs> <laughs> so did, did anybody hear you in the bush and, and come and? At one point they did. At one point some hoodlums stopped outside the bush. They said, "You know what we haven't done in a while? <laughs> we haven't." We haven't beaten someone up in a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they speak, David. Bullies speak like that to each other. And I was in the bush, and I, at the time, I was wearing a red dress. <laughs> what did you say? What? I was wearing a dress by now. What? Why? Why? You said you were in a T-shirt. Originally, I was in a T-shirt, and then I had to put a dress on. <laughs> Why did you put a dress on? Why? It was cold. Where did you get a dress from? I had it in a bag. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I was, I was making a short film and I had to buy the wardrobe for the cast. <laughs> You're in the bush. The hoodlums had moved on. They didn't beat you up. I tricked them. I put the bag over my head. <laughs> you seriously put the bag over your head? Yeah. Put yeah. yourself in my shoes. They're saying they want to beat someone up. 
If they looked down and see me wearing a dress, it'll be like Christmas. <laughs> so I put the bag over my head, and now if they look down, they'll think so, someone's left a bag and a dismembered body hang on. in a bush. <laughs> People at home, don't put bags on your heads. No, no. Let's go back yeah. to the temperature of this bush now. <laughs> You said you went into the dress for warmth, but surely the jeans and the T-shirt were warmer than the dress. There's a lot I of I don't think... I think he said he put the dress on I don't on think over. he took the jeans <laughs> and the T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. oh, he did. Oh, it was he did. double. Yeah, but he didn't slip out of the jeans and the T-shirt, <laughs> fold them up nicely at the side, and then get yeah. the dress and put it on and go, oh, I look wonderful. <laughs> he wasn't doing that. Oh, he's, right. By the end of the night, he's wearing the jeans, the T-shirt, the dress oh, and, and the, the bag. bag. Oh. <laughs> I just say, it's lucky this didn't happen to Melvin, because, if so, he'd have been on a bench wearing a dress and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for a guess. Is he telling the truth? Melvin, oh. what do you think? I think, looking at James, I can believe that he could put on a dress with a bag over his jeans and T-shirt, but a man that picks a bush over a bench I can't trust. <laughs> <laughs> so, on that basis, it's a lie. Oh. Say. I I've got to absolutely say it's true. true. I'm believing every element, really. I'm going to go true. True. Yeah, You're saying true. Right. James, was it true or was it a lie? It's true. <laughs> 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 yes, it's true. James did once spend the night in a bush in Basingstoke. Melvin, you're next. OK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at school, I used to regularly pay my friend to clean my rubbers. <laughs> <laughs> you used to pay your friends to clean your uh, rubbers? It was just one friend. How dirty can a rubber get? Nobody cleans clean? a oh, rubber. Oh, they get dirty, my friend. Do they? <laughs> oh, yes. What, what, full of what? Just lead, mainly? Full yeah. of, yeah, lead. Don't you rub a dirty rubber against a clean piece of paper and it sort of cleans itself? No, what the you're dirt. describing is the action of cleaning a rubber. Rubber? Yeah. yeah. Wait, that is how you clean no, a rubber. See, That's not the to same as it what? cleans itself. That's like saying, <laughs> why do you need to clean a car? You just wipe it all over and it cleans itself. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years. Ten years. Well, what is your... Ten years of this kind of what's... bullying. <laughs> <laughs> what was your friend's name? Um. Edis. What? Edis. What? Edis. It's a Turkish name. How old were you? Uh, like as primary school, so probably like ten. So Wait. ten years old. And why couldn't you have just done that action of just rubbing it against a blank piece of paper to just? Well, he did it as like a service to everyone. How he... much did you pay him? Uh, like a pound a rub. A pound a rub. A pound a rub. Pound. Yeah. Why couldn't you have done it yourself? I'm confused. Because it used to have like a nice smell when when you had it back. Oh, what, sorry, what, 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 what was this magical smell coming from? Well, that's the thing. We didn't know until we got. Did older. you never see? If I was giving a man a rubber <laughs> and he went away and he came back and went, that smells differently. <laughs> I would say, why does it smell differently? I would just leave it at that and go, that's different. Yeah, here's a pound. He just said he found out years later. He was using like car air freshener. To spray it. Oh, it was a lovely. great service. So you, you, yeah. if, like you were cool if you had a fresh rubber. <laughs> <laughs> but how much would a new rubber have cost? Mm. <laughs> Probably about ten p. <laughs> how many times did you pay him a pound to clean your rubber? Like probably happened like once every two months or something like what? that. What? So and this went on for how long? For He's, ages, take, like for I'll years. I'll treat myself. And he was yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. He was I making quite... get it nice. I get it. Get the rubber nicely cleaned and scented. <laughs> yeah. For the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Did Eddie's clean any other stationary items? Um, not that I can remember, but he used to do something else with stationery, but I can't remember what that was. He'd did, do... He didn't sharpen your pencils in a very interesting <laughs> way, did he? <laughs> it was something like he would organise your pencil case, but I can't remember. Organise your pencil! <laughs> 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 I'm picturing Ellis with a little suit and a briefcase. <laughs> Hello, guys, how you doing? It's me again, it's Dennis. I'm here to uh, clean your rubbers or organise your rubbers. <laughs> Oh, hang on, girls. I was chatting you up, but I want to sort out my pencil case. Just <laughs> tell that's, me some that's, more. That's exactly where the economy's going, isn't it? Yeah. Nobody makes things anymore. <laughs> we just provide pointless services. <laughs> I'm a party planner. I'm a pencil case organizer. I shout on panel shows. We used to make steel. <laughs> <laughs> What's it 
Look, the, the thing is, <laughs> during my one, which was true, I started thinking it was a lie. <laughs> I, don't, I, I haven't got a clue anymore. I, I, I actually kind of think it sounds true, but then, for that reason, I want to say it's a lie. <laughs> You've been a big help. Thank you. <laughs> Gabby? M my, my gut's saying true. What's your gut saying? Go on, let's go true. You're going to say true? Melvin? It is. Was it true or was it a lie? It is true. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Mick. <laughs> so, Gabby, what is Mick to you? This is Mick, and I deliberately tripped him up during the wheelbarrow race at my son's sports day. <laughs> OK, James, how do you know Mick? This is Mick, and for six months, he was my sworn enemy when a practical joke got out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Lee. This is Mick, he's my son, and I'm only allowed to see him every second <laughs> Friday. <laughs> 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 Sorry, no, that's not it. <laughs> this is Mick. I once took him home from nursery instead of my own son. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. Is Mick Gabby's cheated child, James's feuding friend, or Lee's traded toddler? David's team, where would you like to begin? Well, um, <laughs> Gabby, the, uh, the wheelbarrow race, you were also a competitor. What, what, was, the, what was the format of the race and how did the accident Your happen? classic... Sports day, wheelbarrow race. Child is the wheelbarrow. I was driving my son as a wheelbarrow, and Mick's mum, Barbara, was driving him. And um, there's always a lot... I, I feel our family gets a lot of pressure on sports day because my husband was an international rugby player and I, I did sport. And I, people always look at us as if they're the ones to beat. You know, I always feel that added dimension mm. of mm. competitiveness. Mm. You were a rhythm gymnastic, weren't you? I was a gymnast. Yeah, I think yeah. they're looking more at him. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in the lead, my son and I, mm. and um, and you know, in, in your peripheral vision, you can feel somebody coming, and as we got to the turn, they were level with us, and um, and my son's arm buckled, and oh, um, oh. which is for a wheelbarrow race is a bit of a no no. That's mm. so it takes you a couple of seconds to recover. So now we're behind. Quite so... painful for your son as well. Perhaps that should be the main. <laughs> <concern>. <laughs> Classic sports person. <laughs> Oh, this That's is a no-no! <laughs> we need this! <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got back level with them, and, and I, I'm ashamed, obviously, about what happened next. Um, so, I can feel, um, you know, these horrible thoughts coming into my mind, you know, we could take him out, you know, we could... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on, this is why we've been taking all the drugs! <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I basically, I stood on... <laughs> I stood on his hand. And so oh, I know. Deliberately? No, <laughs> you were thinking we should take him out. <laughs> so um, he, he then slightly buckled. So he Which then, is a no no. Which, <laughs> <laughs> he got himself back into the race, yeah. and I decided that I couldn't let us win because of, that could be construed in some people's eyes as cheating. Standing on the opposition's <laughs> oh. hands. Yes. In some people's eyes, physical assault. So. <laughs> To, I had to then sabotage us because I couldn't let us win, so I deliberately kind of pushed my son into the ground. So you assaulted <laughs> two children. <laughs> I, I kind of just, you know, pretended to trip onto Reuben, so, right. and then he, his arms buckled double buckle, which is a no-no. No, 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 no. <laughs> and that meant... Re Reuben is your boy. Yes, oh, gosh, yes, oh, yes, yes. You know, the, oh. one, with, you know, one, with the one with the face like that. <laughs> All right. Who would you like to speak to next? OK. Um, James, so Mick became your sworn enemy because of a practical joke. That got out of hand. That got out of hand. Yes. So what was the practical joke or prank? First of all, I'll say for the record, before we carry on, I hate this boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'm nothing but content for him, and I'm furious he's got on this show. <laughs> I just think I feel I can only see him every second Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the what was the practical joke, James? He put cabbage leaves in my bed. <laughs> How did he get in your room? I was staying at his house. Well, on a sleepover? How old are you? <laughs> a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, he wouldn't have been born. <laughs> he was he was nine. And you were, what, 31? <laughs> <laughs> I was, what, 28, 29? And how do you know him? My, I, I know his dad. He's, he's his son. <laughs> <laughs> and you were staying at their house? Yes. Why did he put cabbage leaves? Why is... What is why is that a thing? <laughs> well, it's not a thing until he started doing it. Yeah. <laughs> There's something severely wrong with him. I don't know why he started... <laughs> but you say st this kind started of doing it. Was yeah. It, what, what do you mean, start, this is a one, a one occasion when oh, you're sitting there? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first of many, David. So, you, so I said got out of hand. I do not use those words lightly. <laughs> yeah. So you regularly stay at the house of... Oh, no. Oh. This little man does not restrict these pranks to his own house. <laughs> he has no respect for anyone's privacy and will cross any boundaries available to him. I hate him with all my heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he initially put cabbage leaves in the bed you were sleeping in when you True. were staying at his father. <laughs> Yes. Right, and then subsequently, yes, he has followed you and put cabbage leaves in other places you've been sleeping. No, okay, <laughs> what then? He sent me a cabbage in the post. <laughs> he sent me half a cabbage, cling filmed in a box. I was out when they delivered it. I'd go to the post office to pick it up. <laughs> There's a note inside that said, you got cabbaged again. <laughs> so, OK, so he, 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 he's doing that. Did you... <laughs> bearing in mind that this is a minor, did you at any... It was a major, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> did you at any point retaliate? Yeah, but it took me six months. <laughs> what did you do? After six months of this... Well, I... when you say six months of this, yeah. what is this? There's the initial cabbage leaves in the bed at, yeah. at his house, yeah. and there's the posted cab half cabbage. Yeah. Anything else? His granddad cabbaged me to my face. <laughs> what does that mean? He gave me a present. It was all wrapped up nice. I thought it was a nice present. I unwrapped it. It was another half a cabbage wrapped in cling film. <laughs> Members of the public started cabbaging me. I made the mistake of talking about it on the radio, and then everyone got the idea, and I couldn't turn up to a gig without there being a cabbage hidden somewhere in my dressing room. <laughs> Well, thank God you're playing safe and not saying it on telly, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, did you retaliate? Did I absolutely did. I removed all of his belongings from his bedroom and replaced them with cabbages. <laughs> That's, I would say, a disproportionate response. <laughs> Six months of my life, David. Six months of my life of not knowing where the next cabbage was coming from. It was horrible. <laughs> I had to go big. I've been cabbaged so many times. Somebody started a Twitter account was tweeting pictures of cabbages on me every day. They said stuff like, oi, oi, savoy. It was horrible. <laughs> and that was just the tip of the iceberg. It's a lettuce! It's a lettuce, you idiot! No, but come on, cut me some slack! No, no. <laughs> Say that anyone that. who can no. enjoy that joke about a lettuce would have to be a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to Lee. Lee, <laughs> remind us of your story. This is Mick. I once took him home from nursery <laughs> instead of my own son. Why did you not recognise your own son <laughs> by using your eyes and knowing what he looks like? <laughs> I, I, I do recognise my own son. But we had this new pram and uh, the pram... He, I put him in the pram. He was very young at the time, because, well, you have to, to go to nursery. And uh, I put a him in the pram. pram. At nursery? No, not a pram, a push chair. They're in a pram when they're, when push they're sort of tiny. A push chair, you made one mistake. You say lettuce, <laughs> you said a cabbage. They're on your back. 
He said, Promise that a posture. I get to see him every other week. I'm stressed. <laughs> I put him in the posture. Right. And then I got chatting to all the other mums and dads and stuff. Got chatting, turned round. Little did I realise that one of the other parents had exactly the same posture. And because he was asleep, I just didn't bother talking to him because I thought he was asleep. Pushed him and got all the way home. Long walk as well, because he goes to school in London and we live in Aberdeen. <laughs> <laughs> when, how long was it before you realised? Uh, probably Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was about, it was, believe it or not, uh, preferably do. <laughs> yeah, that's very much the question. <laughs> believe it or not, uh, it was as I went into the front door and I pushed him towards my wife, who was coming towards me, and, and she said, that is not my son. But the other mother would have recognised yeah. her yes. child, so let's, let's go to the let's other go mother. Let's go to the other mother. Let's, so, what happened there? So, obviously, I'm not there to see the other mother. Because no, but I'm, presumably in the police interview later, <laughs> we've gone through those details. No, I knew it would be a bit of a nerve-wracking experience, so I thought I'd better play safe and just keep him. And that's what we did. We just ended up bringing up another child. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I got into the house, pushed him into the house. Yeah. My wife said, that's not my son. So I went, oh! I realised immediately what had happened, obviously. I turned round and I raced back to the school very quickly. So I got in just in time for them to go, what are oh, you? And then... So you got back, you got back just in got time. Got back in time. Just before Mick's mother was going to start screaming, so my child was... has disappeared, my child has disappeared. Yeah, because, no, because what had happened is she, she was getting a bit frantic, but someone had, had calmed her down by doing the obvious and pointing to the child and saying, think, use your logic here. Yeah. There's a child... Child abductors don't tend to leave Swap. a child yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, David's team. Is Mick hmm. Gabby's cheated child? Maybe. James's feuding friend, maybe, or Lee's traded toddler. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the cabbages that is a good trick because cabbages when they get warmed up stink. I also have, you know, been to uh, many a sports day where where the parents do get incredibly competitive. Mm -hmm. I would probably lean towards Gabby. What about you, mm. Melvin? Which way are you leaning? I believe Gabby, but James is just weird, so I believe him even more. <laughs> your, your paranoid view seems to be the whole country's in on it. Now everyone's sending you cabbages. Every time people laugh at me, I suspect they're my enemy, which makes my job very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> You think Gabby, you think Gabby, but James even more. And David thinks it's me, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, James. <gasps> You're going for James. Mick, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Mick, and I am James's worst enemy. <laughs> Mick is James's feuding friend, and here's the proof that, <laughs> that that is what James did to Mick's bedroom. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mick. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, and we start with... <coughs> it's David. I recently ended up in A&E after attempting to use a sledgehammer to crack a nut. <laughs> These two. Right. First of all, what type of nut was it? A walnut. Of course. A walnut. A walnut. Did you use the floor or the wall? Uh, <laughs> I, I used uh, a bit of kitchen surface. What is your work surface made from? Uh, uh, well, at home... No, 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 in your shed. <laughs> What is your kitchen work surface made from in your it's kitchen? It's a sort of... It, I, it's... I don't really know. OK. <laughs> Why did you have a sledgehammer in the kitchen? <laughs> well, it was... But the... Uh, ah! <laughs> I didn't. Oh, ah. this, so this, it's not true? This, <laughs> this didn't happen. Oh, at okay. all. <laughs> Wow, we've broken quickly tonight, didn't we? <laughs> uh, this didn't happen at my house. Where did it happen? Uh -huh. At my parents' so house. So why were you trying purpose. to describe your house when you were talking about the workshop? Because work you kept service. asking me about my own <laughs> workshop. <laughs> just, you I'm just trying to be as helpful as possible. <laughs> okay, can you can you tell us the colour of the kitchen surface in your parents' house? Brown. Brown. Was it brown? <laughs> Did, it, no, it, did just... it look like a tree, but flat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's made of, but it's... Is it formica? Might be. Might, might be formica. Wooden formica. 
For my... <laughs> your parents have got wooden formica tabletops. <laughs> Why so. don't you use your television money and treat them, you two? <laughs> So there's a walnut in your parents' house. Yeah, you, is. for whatever reason, maybe hunger, want to open it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a sledgehammer. Why yeah. is the sledgehammer in your mum and dad, apart from the fact that you knew you were coming round? <laughs> I, 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 I had to go and find the sledgehammer. That Where was, was it? It was in the garage. Right. Uh, the, we couldn't find any nutcrackers. Well, your parents we say we. Your parents were witnessing this. Y yes, I wasn't on my own in my parents' house, smashing away at my <laughs> hand like a maniac. <laughs> It seems to me that on the evolutionary oh. scale between Nutcracker and Sledgehammer, mm -hmm. there are some other things you might find <laughs> lying about the house. I wouldn't yes. Well, and three shattered iPads later, I found the Sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> who was there, by the way? In this, who was witnessing this? There were... Um, my parents were there, my brother, his wife, my wife... Peter Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh sledgehammer! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good. <laughs> Sorry, I'll rephrase that. Rob and David aren't going to get this joke. <laughs> I, I have no idea, but I, there wasn't anyone called Peter Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we know that this story ends with you in accident and emergency. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. How did that happen? Well, I got the. I, I'd been. I'd cracked a few nuts with this sledgehammer, uh, and then maybe I got a bit cocky. Oh. And uh, and I, you know, oh. I mean, cause, and I left my thumb in the way. Oh and no! And it was it was carnage. Sorry, is it really <laughs> the thumb? Can we have a look? All right. No. When was this? Before we looked, this Christmas just gone. Uh, it was this Christmas, yes. So it should look pretty bad, this thumb. Well, it? It was, was, well, what, was, what happened? Was it? You'll find it's it... this absolutely no visible scar. <laughs> <laughs> Neither is there on that one. What a credit oh, yeah. to our National Health Service, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Everyone was absolutely marvellous. It's weird. One might think... almost say miraculous. <laughs> Did they say any bones were broken in your thumb? They x-rayed it and fortunately not. They said, in a few months, you won't be able to tell this as <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you thinking, Lee? Has this been the truth has or been... has he made it up? There's, there's bits of it, but... Well, not. the bits that are true are that he's got thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I believed everything until we looked at his thumbs. And there's nothing And there. then I was like, that man not only has not hit himself in the thumb with a sledgehammer, but I don't think he's picked up anything in weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that it's a lie. You say it's a lie, David. Truth or lie? It is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Well, that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that it's a draw. <laughs> Thank you for watching. See you next time. Good night. Insert name here is the show all about people who share the same name, and I'm helped by Richard Osman and a boy doing work experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brand new series of Insert Name Here, tonight, 10pm, on BBC Two. Next here, the real Marigold on tour. First, a little bit of heartwarming.